What's up, school fans? Welcome back to Trash Talk. And today we got a special guest, and we got to call him the champion, <laughs> 2023 IBL champion, head coach of Prawira Harum Bandung, coach David Singleton. Coach, thank you so much for taking a time with me because I know you're busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, congratulations, uh, being a thank champion. You. How's the last? 36 hours, I guess, have <laughs> been for you. Man, it's been it's been a whirlwind, man. You know, I think uh, just every motion, you know, sometimes you don't even realize that it's really happened. And you're like, wow, the season's really over and we really did it. And uh, some of those type of like surreal kind of feelings you get. Uh, but it's, it's amazing, man. I mean, the support, the love we've been getting is just unreal. All the people in Bandung, all the fans in IBL. Mm -hmm. um, it's just been amazing. And uh, we're so happy and I just uh so cool to call myself a champ, man, and especially in this league in Indonesia and for after four years, it's uh it's definitely the right time, man. Now we can definitely say this is your best year <laughs> coaching. <laughs> right. And of course you came a long way, like you said, four years in Indonesia, yeah. um, three times IBL coach of the year. A lot of people call you overrated. <laughs> um. Yeah, yeah. And how much sweeter does that make winning the championship? You know, it's 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 it's, it's very sweet. I mean, yeah. for me, like I hear some of that stuff too. Mm -hmm. Um, I try to not pay attention to it, but the reality is, I'm not here to try to be the best coach in the league or get get an award for best coach and stuff like that. That just happens, you know. And it's just um, it's just you know what people see and appreciate about me and. The work that I put in, but uh, nobody can take this away from us. Um, nobody can take away the work that I put in and, and the time that I put in. And actually, to be honest, the results that we get. I mean, the last two seasons, uh, we've lost a combined seven games in the regular season. And uh, the run that we put on at the end, 14 straight wins against top competition, top teams. I mean, it's something special. And uh, like, like, you know, missing so many key players and so many key pieces um, this was a real team effort. This wasn't a one-man show or a two-man show. This was multiple guys stepping up, local players making a name for themselves. So I, I just, I just, you know, I don't really worry about the critics, but mm -hmm. I know that the work shows for itself. And uh, what can they say now? Yeah, they cannot say anything now. You're a champion. But yeah. were there, was there any pressure for you as a coach? Especially, yeah. you know, everybody knows who David Singleton is. And with the team that you built this season uh you recruited indra muhammad and then you got brandon francis you got jared shaw Were, right. was there any pressure for you this year um i think so i think mm -hmm. uh you know it's always good to have pressure i definitely put it on myself because i knew even though some people didn't know brandon and jared at the time i knew how good they were mm -hmm. and i knew how good they were going to be in this league and obviously guys like indra who had big moments this season and stepped up and Fernando Monasan oh, yeah. stepping up, you know, guys like that. So it was, um, it was, and I knew the type of roster we had coming in. Obviously I thought I had Brom um, and then things changed. Uh, but I, we still believed uh, basically put it on you to, to be like, Hey man, it's your time to mm -hmm. step up. Fear on, we need you to step up and be a playmaker. Uh, Reza, you know, be that, that anchor, that warrior, uh, the spirit of the team. So you know, it was just uh, it was a situation where, you know what, you put the pressure on yourself, but you know that if if the guys dedicate themselves and put the time in like they did, I I think it's going to be hard to beat us. And, and it was this season. Yeah, man. I mean, like from the jump, when I came to your practice, um, right. I could see like this team just, you know, I think it's ready for the championship. Of course, a lot of people always say that, bro, we are right. a regular season team. You know, they always right. show in the playoffs. Right. Um, it happened last season too when I think because a few changes happened uh, during the break, the long break, of course. But this playoff, you went undefeated, six and yeah. zero. What do you do differently though this season? Uh, you know, for us, it was like we took every game so serious. I think mm -hmm. in other times, I think when maybe when we won a game, we kind of got unfocused or we felt you know highly of ourselves or we mm -hmm. thought the thing was over. And I just think we really as cliche as it is, we took it one game at a time. And, you know, I was just as hard as them uh, after a win as a loss. I would say, hey, man, we can't relax. We can't, you know, settle. We can't get comfortable. 
Um, I would challenge them. They'd be like, dang, coach, we just won. I'm like, I know, <laughs> but you know what? We got to, we got to be even better. And that was the whole thing. It was like, every time we won, it was like, be better than the last game, like find a new way to improve and understand that they're going to come at you. So um, I think everybody took that kind of message and, and ran with it and really understood like the importance of, you know, every game and every, every possession and, and made it count. So I just thought the hunger was there. And and I think that that's what we created this year and the culture and the environment. So um, it was beautiful to see, man. And uh, I'm glad we were able to sweep it. I mean, like the fans was beautiful to see too, because Ooh. the city of Bandung mm. haven't won in 25 years. They pulled up to Chitra like two hours before the game. Oh. And, and the oh. atmosphere was off the charts. They were singing like from before even the tip off man and oh yeah you could feel the energy uh in the building but how was it like though coaching in that <laughs> environment and what went through your mind after the final buzzer yeah man so i could tell you like <laughs> i told a lot of people after the game mm. i've been around a lot of gyms different gyms in asia and america all over and This was one of the most special atmospheres I had ever been a part of. Um, even, you know, a guy like Brandon, he he brought it up at Texas Tech. He's like, you know, we have 15, 20,000 people. He's like, we might have 5,000 people at Citra, 4,000, but it feels like it's 30,000, you know, just like the how everybody feels like they're on top of you. Mm. And, um, man, you know what? We we just give so much love to the support of the city, the fans, the Pereira family. They came out two hours before I'm, I'm in the locker room. I'm writing up the scout and – I can hear chants going on and I can hear claps and, and screams and yells and the boys just go out for the warmups and it's like a huge eruption, you know, and it's like, whoa, I mean, we're looking out there like this is real right now. You know, this is a real thing. So that shot that you'd have hit to seal the game in the fourth quarter, I might have never heard a, a venue or arena like that uh, in quite some time. And it was chills. I had chills in my body. Um, you had the governor of West Java there jumping up and down, going crazy. So it was just, uh, it was an unreal thing. And um, I really appreciate that. And I think we have the best fans in all of Indonesia, to be honest. So it's great. Pateri, Pateri, it's time yeah. to make a bigger yeah. stadium. <laughs> yeah, there you go, man. I know, I know. We that's need that right. plug. We got, we got to plug that in in this interview. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Hey, maybe that's that's the next thing, man. Yeah. You know, get Build, build up Citra. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I think That's it's right. it's much needed because I think a lot of people did, did not get tickets to to watch the finals. Yeah. I think in the future, you know, I I'm pretty sure you guys are gonna go back to the finals. <laughs> so you know, it would be yeah, nice. Yeah. It would be nice if we could have more people in the stadium. But yeah. I think the 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 I think the crowd, of course, helped you guys a lot. Uh, yeah. uh, especially when you guys went down nine zero right away. In the opening, uh, opening tip off, and I'm very impressed because all the local players make the comeback in in the second quarter. Can you just talk about that stretch? Yeah, man, it was a uh, it was a big mindset for us because mm -hmm. we understood that we won the game kind of in the second half without B, and then we feel like you know what, we got to carry this momentum over and understand that his impact was kind of big in the first half. He was drawing fouls. He was. Uh, you know, making layups and things like that, shooting free throws. And we were going to miss that. And we we're like, you know, what? we need guys to step up and make plays, not just from the three-point line, but at the rim and 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 make some of those plays. And I thought everybody embodied that that message. It was a beautiful thing. I mean, Jared can't play 40 minutes. He's not used to playing 40 minutes. And uh, to be quite honest, we had to rock with the with the locals. And I was super confident in it. Um, we haven't done it too much this season, but I know at the end of the day, Uh, what these guys are about, the pride that they have, and uh, how they believe in each other. And it was a great thing to see that when, you know, we had to take Jared out, all of a sudden these guys just went on a run, man. And we're <laughs> like, you know what? We can do this, you know, with or without an import. And uh, that's what makes me the most proud when people try to talk about, you know, this team with Brandon and this team with Jared and these guys are the key guys. And they were, and they are. But the reality is, like, Why do we have an MVP candidate local? Why do we have defense player of the year? Why do we have a six man of the year? Why do we have a six man of the year candidate? Like, this isn't just about one person, man. This is a whole team. And that that's why I said the definition of that was game two of the finals of a real team victory. Right. You know what I mean? And so that was um that was beautiful to see. And I'm just lucky to be coaching these dudes, man. Yeah, yeah so horrible. <laughs> <Yeah>. But <laughs> 
<laughs> but I tweeted though. I tweeted like during that show. I tweeted that you know Prawira deserve to be a champion because they making a comeback with all locals, man. Like it's crazy, man. It was crazy. It was. It and, was. And of was. course, in in game two, uh, you guys uh, miss Brandon. Brandon was yep. suspended in game two. Just how much change did you have to make for your game plan? Um, we we wanted to mix it in because we had to, obviously had to go with Jared more. Mm. So obviously we had to start to try to play out of the post a little bit more. Um, understanding that, you know, we do a lot of pick and rolls and ball screens and, and be with the ball. But with this situation, it's like we got to mix it up because Jared is such an advantage in the post. Mm. I mean, you know, he might not always finish, but he'll get it back and tip it back in and just being seven feet with these long arms, you know, it just uh it's a it's a mismatch. I'll be honest. And they and they didn't really have anybody for him. And so we realized that, you know what, well, we gotta mix in, you know, half post ups and half, you know, some of our normal system sets. And I think the boys really uh understood that and kept force feeding Jared and making them, you know, guard us that way out of the post. Um, and then obviously mixing the other things. But the game plan was the game plan defensively stick with what we do be tough be physical rebound the ball but offensively it was a small adjustment obviously without a guy like brandon yeah jared was the tallest guy on the court and he took he took full advantage though 27 points uh 10 rebounds yeah. and you talk yeah. about it the pick and roll i think the pick and roll was like unstoppable in cool. in game two but what what did you tell or what message did you tell uh jared before game two um, it was funny. Right after game one, he texted me. He's like, I'll be ready for game two. And I was like, <laughs> okay. So I was like, I was like, it's funny because Jared, right as you were texting me, I was texting you. And it was it was crazy. So he, he was laughing about it. And uh, I basically said, I was going to tell you the same thing. I said, look, you probably played kind of a, one of your messiest games in game one, you know, and missing some bunnies and, and different things like this. But I was like, look, game two, you've been here before. Uh, we've done it three times without B. Um, I said, I, I just need you to understand that the workload is going to be on you. Um, you got to have that mindset ready for uh, the ball to be in your hands much more and playing more minutes. And he says, let's go. I'm ready for it. I'm excited for it. And I was so proud of him, you know, for for shining in that moment and stepping up in that stage. You know, it was uh, it was something to see. But I'll be honest, the thing about Jared, and you know this, like, I think he's one of the most underappreciated imports of this season. I mean, he's had games where he's had double doubles in 14 minutes and 16 minutes, you know, 18 points, 12 rebounds in 12, 15 minutes. It's like, that's unreal, man. You know, that's that's some unreal statistics. So I call him Mr. Efficiency for a reason. Um, you know, he's just, uh, I, I feel like an anomaly in this league. I don't think many people can match up with his shooting, his scoring, uh, his ability to create plays for other people. So I'm so happy we got Jerry. I'm lucky. Uh, that we got him. We are lucky we got him. And, uh, you know, this is what it is. Yeah. I know why you're lucky. I know the story. <laughs> what... Yeah. Yeah. Some people know it. Some people know it. Man. And it was, it was like, it was like a blessing in disguise. I was telling Teddy this uh, right before the finals. I said, man, it's crazy how the whole Jared situation ended up. I go, how, how lucky we were there. He goes, you're right. I was like, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know? I think so. Jared is probably the best big because he could shoot three too, you know? Yeah. And yeah. then, of course, uh, he's very quiet. That's why probably he's not on the media a lot. Yeah. Um, but I believe, I believe a lot of teams <laughs> next season <laughs> got to look at, look at, look at Jared. Hey, season. we're we're not, we're not, we're not stupid, man. We know, we understand that. <laughs> everybody's going to be coming after him and mm -hmm. the ability to be seven feet shoot and score inside. I mean, that's come on in, in the IBL in Indonesia. That's just a, that's a rare situation. So um, we know, and we're going to go back and obviously have our discussions with him and his people and definitely do the right thing. So yeah. that's a premium yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah. And, yes, and, it is. Yes, it is. And, and he's a great person. Like I said, man, like you said, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's super chill, super chill guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And in game two, you did not take out Yuda at all. Played all 40 minutes. <laughs> was that more of your decision? Or Yuda came to you like, Coach, I want to play 40 minutes tonight. So it wasn't. I always try to give him two or three minutes in the first quarters. Mm -hmm. But what happened was in that game, we had a couple other players kind of struggling. 
And so we had to pull out some people that we normally wouldn't pull out um, at that time. It, it would have been Utah, but you know, we didn't, it was like, look, we wanted to go all out for this game. We wanted to prove that, you know, we can do this, you know, and it, it wasn't, it wasn't a negative towards Brandon. It's like, look, Brandon, you've carried us a lot of this season and done so many beautiful things and won his games, but we still can do this even despite not having you. And I think the boys were just like, look, they came together before the game, like, man, we can do this. You know, uh, we're not going to stress or worry about anything. Just go out there and play the game. And look, you know, this, we, we have a situation where we lose Brandon as a ball handler. Mm -hmm. Fear is a, playmaker pseudo ball handler amazing basketball player but he's not a true point guard and then you got Yuta. so in these type of scenarios where they're pressuring they're a good defensive team they got guys like Yasai all over the place you got to keep a guy like that on the floor to to run your system set you up and get you in the right plays and um he was able to do it man i told you i feel like this guy's got like three double d chargers in his back in his back and he's just like a battery and he's just like uh, unstoppable, man. I mean, he rarely ever asks to come out. If he does, it's for one, two minutes, and then he's ready to go. So it's a credit to him taking care of his body and being in the best shape ever. So I appreciate him. Yeah, man, that's crazy, though. He played a total of 30, uh, 76 minutes, I think. <laughs> 76 minutes, two games. That is crazy, but it was a special hey, It was a special series, yeah. though, for Yuda. And, of course, probably a special yeah. season, too, for him. You unlock yeah. another level of you that I feel this season and in game two, like you said, he hit that big shot three point oh. at the end. Just how special it was for you to see your point guard doing that in the finals. I mean, look, I'm, I'm not, I don't have any problem saying it here. I, I've said it on different, different occasions. I tell him all the time to me, he's the best point guard in all of Indonesia. I don't see anybody else on his level. Um, I think just the calmness, the composure that he plays with, um, how he's never afraid of any moment, uh, how he wants the ball um, at any time, um, won us multiple games this season, hit multiple big shots. And I'll be honest, like a like point guard at five foot seven, averaging 14 points, five rebounds and five assists in one season at that size. Um, you don't see that a lot. Um, so I thought he had a special season. Um, I definitely thought he, you know, deserve potentially to be the MVP up there with Caleb 100%. And um, yeah, man, he took the, he took the, he took the next step. You know, I think he always respected Brom and he understood that they're a dynamic duo, but he's like, look, you know, it's my time now, you know, it's my time to step up and, and, and be in that role. And it's like, man, this dude, this dude, I, I just see even, he can be even crazier. He can be even better, you know, than he is right now. And he has so much more room to grow, but I just feel like he's, one of those players that just he's got ice cold in his veins, you know, it's like, you know, like give him the ball. He's going to go make a play. And that's what I'm so thankful for is having to do like that, who just never worries about a mistake, never worries about the moment, just keeps going and keeps grinding and keeps doing it. So um, to me, he's the best PG in the, in the whole, all of Indonesia. And I think that's going to stay that way for a while. I agree with you though. I mean, I agree with that statement though. And this yeah. is much crazier if you know the story, right? After the first series, he was like struggling in the first game against Borneo and he got sick. He went to the hospital. And then what's crazier is like he just got better after that. Yes. <laughs> right. Absolutely. It's uh man, you know what? That's why I said I said to people, man, you know, we could write a book on this season, I'll be honest. It's, it's it wasn't just all, you know, flowers and roses and stuff like that. It wasn't, but you know, that's the thing. Like, he I, he was so frustrated with himself after that game, obviously because of the matchup, obviously because the kid, you know, obviously Agam had a good game. And it wasn't just all on him, and that's what I told him. Um, but, you know, he won, he has a high expectation for himself and a high pride, and he felt like, damn, I let my team down tonight. And, you know, and we almost could have lost that game. And I, and I just told him, look, don't worry about it. But then middle of the night, he's sick, he goes to the hospital, you know, he doesn't practice. He shows up at 6 p.m. for an 8 p.m. game in Bandung. Um, and he just looks at me and I go, dude, you've been in the hospital? And he's like, I'm ready to go, coach. I'm like, <laughs> are you still sick? He's like, no, I'm great. He's like <laughs> jumping around and bouncing around in front of me. I'm like, are you, are we, what are you? Are you some sort of like <laughs> alien or, or machine? Like what's going on here? And then he just goes and balls out, like you said, for the rest of the way. And I was just like, wow, this guy is something different, man. He's something different, man. I you know. know? Oh my god! Can I, can I wait to talk to him though about that story? But yes. 
Now we got to talk about the F, uh, finals MVP, Reza Ooh. Guntara. He was out of this world, man, during these finals. 26 points out of nowhere in the first game. Yeah. And the sec yeah. in the second game, I feel like, man, he was very crucial defensively. Um, mm -hmm. I think he got nine rebounds, if I'm not mistaken, Lee. He did. Yeah, he, did. he got nine rebounds in the second game. Beyond impressive, though. Beyond impressive for him. But what impressed you the most about Reza during the finals? Well, you know, just his leadership. I thought, like, he had that kind of presence about him, like, I'm Reza. And I was like, okay. Like, everybody had to, like, okay, you got to respect this. I can guard a local point guard. I can guard an import big. Like, you can put me on anybody you want, and I'll be totally fine. I mean, the biggest thing for me in that series was we were able to put Reza on Sutton one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. without any help. And that was a big deal for us, not having to help and rotate and get, leave their shooters is – he just stood his ground and he said, you know what? Let me take this matchup, coach. I got it. Um, I can do it. I've done it before. Um, when we were in the S Series 7, he guarded Anthony Johnson to 12 points and against Dewa. He guarded Sutton in that series as well. So um, that was a big step for him as I just thought his defensive mindset, his defensive mentality, his toughness, all that was on display. And then from there, I thought everything else opened up offensively. I thought he was able to relax on offense and just let the game come to him. You know, they're trying to leave him. They're trying to sag off of him in the first game. I'm like, shoot the ball, go score. And he did that. You know, he he wasn't afraid of that moment. Um, he put a lot of time and work into it. Um, but I think everything for Reza starts with his defense and his offense comes after that. And uh, I was just so blessed that he had a great night shooting that night. Uh, he was on, on attack mode at all times. And uh, again, like, it's just showing more parts of Reza, you know, more parts of his game and how clutch – he really is. And uh, that was an historic performance. I think that game one performance will go down for the rest of his life. Uh, 26 points in the finals, um, going and dominating a, a traditionally strong team with four national team players in PJ. Um, it was something special. And like I said, man, I'm just thankful to have him, man. So, yeah. He told me his, he was surprised that PJ left him open <laughs> the whole game one. <laughs> Right. And, and people and to be honest, they did that in um in series seven and mm -hmm. and even teams like Daywa, they would just sag off or switch off. I'm like, look, you that you can't let them play five on four. You know, you gotta be a part of it. You gotta be involved. You gotta go set other people up or go set yourself up. And he he's like, you know what? I'm ready for that, coach. You know, he put a lot of time in. He put a lot of time in in practice, a lot of time in in our individual sessions and with Coach Donda, they put a lot of work in. So um it's, it was good to see, man. And he's got a lot more work to do. But you know what? Like, I think this guy has got to be a national team player moving forward. I don't see how he couldn't be. And uh, I see all the people that are ahead of him. I mean, he's going right at them, you know. And so uh, I think they got to consider him. And I hope that, you know, he gets that chance to to wear that jersey. I mean, after that finals, they better call him up. <laughs> right. right, exactly. Like, there's exactly. no way that he, he's just not going to get a call up to Team Nuts, man. I think he deserved that right. call up as well. And Hans Abraham sprained ankle in game right. two. Just how proud of you seeing him fight through that pain and still hit that big three, I think, in game two. Yeah, man. You know, uh, it's just, I mean, he's just, I, I call him Kyle Corver, man. Like, it's just like, <laughs> Anytime you need a three or anytime you leave this dude, he has perfect technique, perfect form and release. Um, he always gets his feet set at the perfect time. So that's why we ran so many plays for him this year. Cause it's like, look, you got this guy who's a lights out shooter. You got to use him, man. You can't just let him stand in the corner and wait. So we would run a lot of sets and plays for him to get him set up and get him to basketball. And he was locked and loaded and ready. And everybody talked about Hans being a regular season shooter or a preseason shooter, and he never could make him in the big time games. That was the thing about him. And I'm like, you know what? Go show him, Hans. You know, go go show him the work that you put in. We believe in you. We know that you can do it. And just getting him the ball more. I think one thing you noticed about Hans this year, he wasn't just shooting. He was driving. He was setting up. One of our playoff games, he had four assists. Wow. Um, finding other people, dropping off dimes to Jared, you know, uh, making left-handed layups. You know, it's just just some some things that you wouldn't expect from a guy like that. But um, he definitely deserves six man of the year. I think he's the best shooter, catch and shoot player in this entire league. And Hans has got some real confidence and toughness about him, man. He, he's quiet, too, but he got that look like I'm that dude, you know, and, and that's what I always appreciate and respect. And it gives me some calmness. It's like 
all right, Hans, you a bad dude, man. You a bad dude, <laughs> you know? And, uh, and, and he is, he is, yes. man. He's, he's a cold dude. So I, uh, you know, this, this guy, I mean, the future is bright. I, we got to keep him. And, uh, I can't wait to keep watching this man, you know? Yeah. He is though this season. He, 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 he has a couple of big shots this season, to be honest, you know? Ooh. Multiple. And, yeah. Exactly. Damn, yeah. Damn, we only got six minutes left, <laughs> but oh, okay. Okay. Um, I knew coach, I knew it, coach. I told you, right? Timo gonna be your secret weapon <laughs> in yeah, game two, yeah. especially play 11 yeah. minutes. Came back from that injury, though, that big injury. And he, he didn't get any minutes, too. Uh, he didn't get a lot of minutes during the season. Just, yeah, why do you have that confidence on him, man? Because Timo has got the, the, the mindset and he's got the makeup, the body, the build, the mm -hmm. physique. Uh, he's got some of those things. It took him a, quite a while to come back. I'll be honest. Mentally, I think he wasn't moving the right ways early on when he started to come back. And we're like, look, we're not going to rush this guy. We're not going to push this guy to do things. And then when he started to get the time, it was about rhythm and getting his timing back and getting his confidence back, right? And finally, we had some real heart-to-heart -heart talks. Timo probably can okay. tell you about those stories. Okay. And uh, where I challenged him, uh, he didn't like all of it all the time, but – I think he appreciated and respected the fact that I'm challenging him because I believe in him. Mm. Um, he is a strong player. Uh, not many people look like him at his size and his position and being able to slide his feet and defend. And that was the biggest thing that we had last year with Timo. Timo was a lockdown defender. We called him Mr. Untouchable last year in the wow. bubble uh, mm. because he would play nine to 12 minutes and he would just be on lockdown. He would Nobody would go past him. Nobody would score over him. And we needed another ball handler, right, in that game, too. We needed a guy that could help out, bring the ball up, um, defend Yesiah, defend Pross, defend some of these guys, and not be afraid. And um, once I gave him that belief and trust, you could see that he was confident out there, hitting multiple threes in this playoff run, uh, where he's just coming in and popping the three. You're like, whoa, there's Timo with a three, <laughs> you know? And uh, and then playing really good defense, too. So, um I'm so proud of him. I think this is a big step for him after not playing a lot this regular season and then carrying over to next year to have some more confidence, you know? Yeah, I think he'll be in the yeah. rotation next season. Pretty sure. Should be. He, he, <laughs> definitely, he definitely should be. That's right. He definitely yeah. should be. Yeah. And I, I saw the clip on IBL Instagram that, you know, you had an exchange with uh, you guys embrace each other, you and Yesaya. Just what yeah. were you saying to Yesaya after the final buzzer? I was just telling him, man, like, man, you you are a heck of a player, man. I said, you you give me headaches. I stay up late at night worried about the stuff that you can do. And I told I told my team, I told him, I said, you know, you're Mr. Clutch. You always come up in the clutch. You always make big layups and big shots and big moments. Um, and so I just wanted to give him huge respect and tell him that, uh, you know, you're, you're on the right path. You're doing the right things. And you continue to get better every year. And so uh, it's a big respect to him. I love watching him play. I always, when I turn on a PJ game, I always make sure I, I watch him. And uh, he's got, a, obviously, a bright future. And he's another kid that loves the moment and loves to, to play in those big games. So a lot of respect to him. And now, so how many people are already saying Coach Day for Team Nas? Oh, <laughs> shoot, man. <laughs> hey, man. You know, I, I mean, some people were saying it for sure. I, I can't, I can't help but see some of that stuff yeah. and some of my even my own team. Yeah. But you know, if that comes to that day, whenever that does, if it does, I would, you know, I would obviously welcome that and appreciate that. But for now, obviously, I'm with Pereira and I'm happy to be here. But um, there's nothing like being representing a national team and being a part of that and being able to coach that. So, uh, was that would that be something that I would love? Of course, 100. Um, and you know, I'm not I'm not the decision maker on that, but uh only time will tell, I guess. That's a politically correct answer. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but you found a home there now with Prawira yeah, Harubani. So you're coming back, right? Next season. Absolutely, man. We gotta back run to it back. back, man. We gotta run it back, <laughs> man. We have to. There's no question about it. Yeah. yeah. And now you just need that three point contest on my channel, man. You just need oh, that three point man. contest hey. crown. Hey. Hey, I gotta get you back, man. You got me on that in our in our home gym in front of my team. I was like, how the heck did Rock just beat me, man? I was like, so I told my boys they still gave me mess for that. So I was like, you know what? Uh, we I gotta challenge you now. Now's we'll my set time it to up. challenge you. We'll set it up yeah. before next season. We gotta set it up, man. Yeah, coach. It's all good, man. <laughs> yeah.
Coach, thank you so much, man. And thank once you, man. again, congratulations being a champion. We still have a lot thank to you. talk about. Probably we'll talk about it next season, before next season. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Enjoy your off thank season. You. Enjoy your holiday. And thank you so much once again. And yeah, man, happy for you, man. Like I said, you've been so nice to me all year long. Yeah. I I'm following your journey since preseason, midseason, and yeah. now you're being a champion. So I really appreciate you, Coach. Thank you, man. I appreciate you and everything that you do for the culture and for, for not just the professionals, but the youth, the movement. You go out to 12U, 16U, 14U. I mean, you you out there in the grassroots. So uh, I appreciate you, man. And uh, I'm glad we we're able to do this. And I hope we can do it again. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Coach. And yeah. I'll see you again soon. Very soon, Coach. Peace out, everybody. Thank you, man.